Welcome everybody to another video boxing film analysis. This is your good friend Mr. BDA and I am glad that everybody could be on board for this one. In this episode we are going to be taking a look at the upcoming super flyweight title fight between Kosei Tanaka 15-0 with 9 knockouts versus Kazuto Ioka 25 wins, 2 losses and 14 knockouts. This fight is going to be taking place in Ota City General Gymnasium in Tokyo, Japan on Thursday December the 31st, the Japanese are continuing with their tradition of New Year's Eve fights and this one will not disappoint. Two excellent fighters, both fast, both skilled, both who love going to the body. So I think most boxing fans are expecting a good one. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Kosei Tanaka first. We're going to be taking a look at his strengths, his weaknesses. And then in the second episode, we'll be looking at Yoka. So without further ado, fellas, let's get started. All right, so as, as far as defense is concerned, Kosei Tanaka has a couple of uh, things that he should be working on. But for the most part, he is a good fighter. As you can see here, he uses his legs very well. He can lean away from punches. So he's got good reflexes, angles, moving the head there, good head movement, which he doesn't always do, as we're going to take a look at when it comes to his weaknesses. But he can keep his hands up when he wants to and move that head, weave, slip punches, Pivot away from punches. The guy's got big calves, by the way. He's about five feet, uh, four inches tall, I think. So I'm, I'm much taller than this guy. And yet I have scarecrow legs. This guy's got fucking Manny Pacquiao calves. I mean, that's not fair. But hey, God gives, God takes, right? Anyway, those powerful calves give him power. And they also give him the ability to do this. Very deft footwork, always planted. See him weaving here. We're going to take a look at the footwork later on. Good. Look at this, how he's able to roll with the shots here so he weaves under the right left hand up for the left hook and then he sees the right hand coming he just puts it up and rolls with it and he's ready to roll with the left hook if it comes but instead he comes back with a hook there again using those angles <clears throat> that was against Tagushi by the way very good fighter who went the distance with Naoya Inoue back uh, seven years ago this is against Kimura which was a tough fight for Tanaka but you can see here again his footwork very controlled footwork, he doesn't exaggerate it, he doesn't run away from his opponents, he's always in distance to come back, there you see him weaving again, slipping shots there, slipping jabs, which he doesn't always do as we're going to take a look at, but good reflexes, very good footwork, side to side movement, leaning away from shots, look at this beautiful rolling, so here he slips to his right, leans away from the jab, and he's the right hand coming, so he rolls away with it, whoop, and then, and then continues to move towards his left. And look at how Kimura is out of balance, off balance here because um, uh, Tanaka changes the angle there by pivoting away completely. That There's nothing here that Kimura can do back to him. He has to reset. Again, side to side movement catches him there with the left wing. Now this is, I mean, let's play that again in real time. Now this is in the 11th round, I believe, so both guys are a little tired. You see Tanaka, they're just buying time with his hands down, which is a big no-no, but look at his footwork. So he's moving away towards the right. Kimura is coming, coming forward, trying to catch him. He catches him with the jab as Tanaka tries to slip it. So then he slips to right, moves towards the left. Kimura off balance, doesn't know where he is. At this point, uh, Tanaka continues pivoting towards his left and he leaves Kimura behind. Now he's gotten cornered and he comes back with a right. Just beautiful movement here, slipping some more shots. Weaving, I mean, beautiful movement. The jab, as far as the jab is concerned, Tanaka doesn't really use the jab that much. But when he does use it, uh, it's pretty quick jab. He's got short arms, so he's not really going to be a big jabber, but it's a powerful jab. Here, something that I don't like, and as we're going to take a look at the weaknesses, is that he tends to drop that left hand after he throws it, but he does improve somewhat. Um, in this, in the Taguchi fight, he was sort of telegraphing the jab a little bit, but then here in the Kimura fight, he started throwing it from different angles and l much less telegraphing. First of all, look at how he keeps the glove here in place. Nice um, standard guard. And so all he does is has to extend it forward steps in there with the jab so it's a shotgun jab adds much more power to it and he extends it fully and boom catches kimura right there on the forehead so good form here another thing you can notice about the jab is that again he's got the guard in place here so all he has to do is extend his body turn it uh, towards the left a little bit and boom catches it. and you notice he only slightly turned 
the glove on there at the end, which is what you're supposed to do. But it also came out, the fact that he didn't twist it earlier sort of uh, impeded him from telegraphing it and impeded Kimura from seeing it. This is how Nacho Berenstein, uh, the famed Mexican trainer, teaches his fighters to throw it. He doesn't want them to, to turn it too much. He just wants them to keep it in place and just, boom, uh, throw it with the, with the palm facing towards the right. But uh, so similar jab there. Here you see him doubling on the jab. And the jab allows him to throw the combinations that we're going to take a look at later. So Tanaka, not a big jabber, but when he wants to, uh, he can get that punch out there. As far as the right hand is concerned, he doesn't throw the straightest right hand in the world. He's more, uh, and he's much of more of a overhand right type of guy. Uh, but as you can see there, he can also throw the cross as a hook. Inside chopping there from long distance there again, a chopping right hand. Straight right there, you see him working that punch at the end of the combinations. Interesting, again, we talk about the legs, the strength of the legs. He drives that right hand right through the guard and he punches through the target. So for those not familiar with the terminology in boxing, you don't want to just tap the guy paf, and then bring the, the punch back. You want to punch through the target, meaning he imagine that the punch is that the target is here and not the head itself. So you want to really try to touch the target that's the imaginary target that's residing behind the head and that's what Tanaka is doing here so good power breaking the guard there landing on the forehead here he counters because as we're going to take a look at later Tanaka is a body puncher and so is Kimura here and they were both trading vicious shots to the body and Tanaka went I mean Kimura went to the body boom caught him but then as soon as Tanaka catches it replies with a nice sharp chopping there right hook and boom you can tell that really shook up Kimura's head then again the angles always with the angles Tanaka right hand and whoops and jumps towards the left there again countering doubling up on the right this is the type of shot that um, Ioka is gonna have to be very careful watch out for and not just walk forward the way Kimura is here with his hands down just very sloppy work from Kimura and boom catches the right hand um, Essentially, Tanaka is just making him come forward, come forward, and then launches a tight right hand. These are the type of shots in the mid-range that can be very dangerous if you don't see them come and catch you off guard, and they can knock you out. But uh, credit to Kimura for taking it. Straight right, there was a hook, there was an overhand right at the mid-range chopping rights, and he can counter off that jab right there. So. Kim, uh, Tanaka can throw those right hands from different angles as you can see overhand over the jab uh, short inside right hands right hooks straight right uh, just very well rounded as it pertains to the left hook he can counter off the left hook very well here this is against Taguchi again so here he's just watching watching parries the right with the, his own right which is a little bit unconventional catches the right a little bit but then answers with a left hook. I didn't really like his left hook in this fight. Uh, very... Sl well, this one was good. This was a nice tight uh, hook. And you can see here just waiting, waiting. He catches it on the jaw, not on the gloves. We're going to take a look at one of his uh, deficiencies there from when it comes to defense. But anyway, here he catches it and answers back with a left hook that's much harder than Taguchi's right hand. Boom. And you can see that right on the jaw there and actually shoves Taguchi towards the, uh, the other side now this is a beautiful move too here he's waiting oh, he sees the jab he's actually watching for the right doesn't come so he just says boom leans back so he's leaning back and then he, as soon as he sees the opening leans forward a little bit and just catches him with a fencing type of right at left hook there again i didn't really like the left hook in this fight because he was sort of keeping it a little bit too straight although it's a nice scoring left hook there and good controlling of the distance and setting up Taguchi there because what Tanaka likes to do is he likes to stand in front of his opponent a lot with his hands up and just let them throw shots so then when they least expect it and they think they're gonna at least hit the gloves or something he leans back as we saw earlier and boom, boom comes here comes back with two shots so good timing and good um, intelligence from him of setting up guys with the, with the hooks with the counters nice hooks there again but he's not really keeping them in the L they're like they're very his arm is very straight as you can see here maybe that's not the best example like here well that's a nice tight left hook there maybe I don't know what I'm talking about here with the left hooks but I, I in the Kimura fight his left hooks I, I love the left hook like this one for example boom he catches a jab 
and then uh, counters with left hook. Sikimura, there's his left hand low, right hand low, sorry. Boom, catches him and then ends with the jab. That's another thing we're going to take a look at with um, Tanaka when he throws combinations. He finishes with the jab sometimes. Now here again, waiting, catches the left uppercut. And as soon as he sees the opening, he turns. Now he's turning his body. That's the other thing I wanted to point out in the other ones. He wasn't really turning the body on the left hooks against um, Taguchi, but here he catches it and boom, really turns a little bit more with the left hook. Doesn't turn all the way, but he doesn't have to because you can see here he turns enough. The um, left hook, not in the perfect L position, but good enough so that he stunned Kimura there. And so that's those are the left hooks there, as you can see. Body shots. Now we start getting into the nitty gritty here. I love me some body shots. If you've been watching the podcast or some of my other film analysis before, you know I love me some body shots. And Tanaka does not disappoint when he goes to that body. Now look at here how he... Because we saw him he, that he can lead with right hands. Especially if he's waiting for the other guy's jab, he comes in with the overhand right. So here what he does is well, he leans towards the left like he's a, as if he's about to throw the right. So Taguchi covers up and then Tanaka is in a position to launch that left hook to the body right behind the elbow. Um, notice also how he's stepping towards toward the left end and loading up on the left hook and turning. See how he's putting his weight on his toe here which is what you're supposed to do and turn and then turns the, the the foot a little bit you there's different schools of thought about throwing the left foot some people like to see the, the the left foot turn all the way towards the right other people say no you're just supposed to put your weight on the toe uh whatever it may be he's um doing it the right way he's put shifting the weight towards the right and boom you can see there that he pushed Teguchi towards the right a little bit there even though he was already moving towards the right but it just shoved him a little bit more there towards the right so it's a hard left hook and then he goes to both sides of the body with the right hook there and then the left hook again and again right uppercut so he puts his it allows him to shift his weight towards the left now he's loading up and boom shifts his weight back towards the right and uh, hitting it with the palm a little bit you know he's not really hitting with the knuckles but uh, nevertheless, it can be a good punch. It, it, if you just hit the right spot, it can be quite effective and you can drop a guy even if you just hit him with this part of the glove. Again, perfection is for losers as long as you hit the guy and do the damage. That's all that really matters. And he, <laughs> he's actually shoving him to the side, pushing him there, boom, lifting, lifting him up in the air a little bit. And uh, it's not quite a shovel hook, meaning it's not coming from the downward angle. But if he hits the guy the right way, it can drop him. Now here he's throwing a left uppercut to the plexus, so he's working all sides of the body. The right, I mean the left with his right hand, and then the left foot here, and then the, the uppercuts down the middle in the plexus. Again there, right to the body, again another left foot. This is another beautiful move here. So again, throwaway shot, meaning it's just a little tap to distract. Left uppercut, notice how he, when he taps him with the right he actually sits down see this just slightly an inch maybe even less sits down on the shot so he can spring up with the left boom now with the left uppercut he makes Taguchi defend for more uppercuts or hooks but nope there's no hook upstairs coming it's actually hooked to the body so what he's doing is essentially here is Tanaka sending him up to close up his guard and leave himself open for the left hooks and again you can see he's turning toward with that left hook look at his feet here again turning that punch over and changing angle slightly too so left hook and he's coming forward opens up his his uh, stance to have more uh power on it so he can shift and then and he's moving slightly see that right foot changing angles so he can better continue his attack but of course he didn't hear again and then finishing up upstairs left hook to the body left hook to the body doubling up on the left hook against kimura as well right to the body left hook to the body and then finishing upstairs with a combination i mean just hard left hooks i mean look at this i mean this is just a standard one too um kimura is just covering up and they're both in the mid range a little bit so just a quick one too on the short range there and then boom really this is a shovel hook here trying to dig it under the elbow slashing the rest of his lower torso there and you can see kimura sort of like 
see that that reaction there split second like he, see his arms how they just slightly puts them down there to try to pin the elbows and get more protection here again well this was a like <laughs> hitting him with the thumb almost there and then he goes upstairs with the left hook so this is what the the, the you know when they say kill the, the the body and the head will follow this is what tanaka tries to do there with his opponents and again another beautiful shovel hook there well not actually shovel hook here but loading up see how he's loading up there shifting his weight again to his left and boom right behind the elbow trying to get to that liver then you guys get the point now this is a very uh, interesting move here he shifts here so he turns southpaw see how he his right leg puts it forward so he's shifting here changing stances and uh, he throws a stabbing straight left to the plexus Ooh, and see how Kimura protects himself there. Now here Tanaka, um, I don't think you realize how much you hurt him. This is the thing, like Gonzalo likes to point out in the podcast too, when you're taking a shot to the body, you're not supposed to harden the abs and tighten them, nor are you supposed to breathe in. What you do is you breathe out, you fill up the stomach and you it allows you to take the punch, especially if you see it coming. When you don't see a punch coming to the body, he doesn't even have to be hard because here, when he's getting hit with, with big shots, he's sort of seeing them a little bit. See there? Like he, subconsciously, he knows the shot's coming, so he's getting ready for it and he can take that. And of course, he's protecting himself with the... But even there, like here, it hit him. But he can sort of see it coming and, and sort of take it. But when it's a shot you don't see coming, it doesn't have to be hard like here. So that's why sometimes guys, they load up to the body. Nah, man, just stab 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 and set it up confuse the guy with shots upstairs downstairs and when he least expected and this is just i mean a, another layer of craft here by shifting but he shifts and so kimura really doesn't know where the punch is coming from and boom catches it right down the plexus and he was hurt so it, it, big does you know if you want to hurt a guy don't necessarily go big combinations now this is really tanaka's bread and butter especially when he starts combining it with um uh, footwork and angles and you can see here he really goes he mixes up the punches very well uppercuts straights hooks and sometimes he'll throw shots with the same hand so further confusing his opponent like for example here just a one two throw away shots there see that boom and then he so he throws one two three actually one two three little shots but then the right uppercut is the, the real hard one he comes in see up right uppercut and then with the same hand right hook so there he's trying again same hand so just a nice little uppercut there almost an up jab boom catches him jab to keep him in place and confuse him right hand now this is a beautiful move here um he throws the jab taguchi tries to counter over that jab because see how Tanaka drops the, the left hand, and we're going to take a look at that later on. So he drops the hand, and Taguchi tries to come back with the right, but what does Tanaka do? Good reflexes and good work with all here. He catches the right, parrying it and rolling with it just a little bit. And as, as he's rolling, he comes back with a left hook and then a right hand. So not just one punch at a time from Tanaka. Boom, boom. A little dangerous here. Catching him on the top of the head, the scholar could have broken his hand or hurt it, but... Nevertheless, a beautiful sequence there from Tanaka. A beautiful move right there as well. See, they're changing angles. Now, this is another beautiful move here, a beautiful sequence. So what he does is he's watching uh, Taguchi. Taguchi tries to come with a lead left uppercut. Tanaka dips down, fires off an uppercut that catches the, the side there of Taguchi so again this is how you throw an uppercut fellas you dip down just a little bit and then all you gotta do is shift your weight upward and boom catches him with the right uppercut left hand right hand during the exchange left foot to the body and then a right hand upstairs so he's mixing up shots he's moving his head exchanging at the same time going to the body and then finishing upstairs I mean in the midst of an exchange that's very hard to do man but he's able to pull it off again just I mean jeez look at this against Kimura here one so he jabs Kimura does a good job of parrying a jab left hook again throw away shot right and he so he throws the left hook and then look at his feet as he's throwing the left hook it's a throwaway left hook he's getting closer it was just to distract him these two shots were just to distract to get uh, close here 
and the angle too. He's outside of um, Kimura's range here, throws the right hand just at the right angle. Look at the beautiful technique here. Look at how he, his uh, left, right foot, he's twisting it there and bending it too, like almost like a 45 degree angle so he can get more pop in there. Boom, right hand, jab, steps back, whoops, steps back again, and he's out of trouble. Doubling up on the left hook. I mean, look at this hand speed. Two left hooks. To, this is just, I mean, he's just showing off here. Two left hooks to the body. Jab, jab again. Right hook. Change his angle just a little bit. And that's when he hurt uh, Tanaka, uh, Kimura here. And again, just deftly switching angles a little bit here. Right hand after the uppercut. Left hook. And with the left hook. Now look at his right hand here. Uh, sorry, his right hand. I always get confused. Look at his left hand. So he throws the left hook and look at his left foot here. Whoops. Changes the angle just a little bit. And he took away the sting of that Kimura hook there. Just a little bit. So very sly there work from Tanaka. And then he comes back. This is what I love about him. One punch at a time doesn't cut it. He knows that he has to throw combinations. So if he misses with one shot and then again, taking the step back there. Whoop. Mixing in uppercuts there. Again, changing angles. See, right hook and whoop. Just changes the angle there. Again, changing the angle. Doubling up on the left uppercut. Just a bunch of straights there. I mean, look at this. Yoka's gonna have to throw some hooks there to confuse uh, Tanaka there. And catch him when he's th switching angles. Because otherwise, he's just gonna dance around him. Speaking of dancing, look at this. Switching angles. Uh, so let's take a look at this sequence real quick here. Let me rewind this. Um, what he's doing here is essentially he's he's leading Kimura in a dance here. So step back. And as he's about to switch towards the left, boom, catches him with the right. So he changes angles again. Now he changes angles to the right, makes Kimura miss. Oh, am I going to see this? He bounces to the right, then to the left, and he comes back with the right as he does it. So now Kimura doesn't know if he's going to continue towards the left or if he's going to stay in place. Turns out he stays in place to try to get some back. Boom, one, two, leans back from the hook, ducks a little bit under the right there, catches the left hook with the right hand, and then rolls away from the subsequent right and subsequent attack and just gets out of the ropes more combinations here more combos shifting here again as he's walking forward so notice here he's walking forward he shifts here towards the left uh, south position Ooh, he's about to throw he's about to throw a little flick there and he shifts again with the, as he's throwing the left then shifts again towards the, the southpaw position and he attacks him. Just completely confusing poor Taguchi there. I mean, this is just good work here. And against Kimura as well. Now, when it comes to weaknesses for Tanaka, he's not perfect. And uh, when it comes to jabs, he eats a lot of jabs. There you see here, big no-no here from Tanaka leading with the right uppercut and he eats a jab to the face. The thing I don't like about Tanaka a lot is that he, see, he doesn't really uh, keep his chin tucked in to the full position. He's up in the air a little bit, hands down, right in Taguchi's range, and he hits a jab that snaps his head back. It's too many of the jabs that he gets hit with are, see this, like, he's exchanging jabs here, but his hands are just not in position to parry or to, to or, and, and you know, if you're going to do this, at least keep your chin tucked in like Golovkin does sometimes. But this type of jab snapping his head back, not only is it a bad look with the judges, because it's a very apparent scoring blow and the judges take note of it, but if you start taking too many shots like this, it's like, oh yes, Mr. Chan. No, anyway, because he looks like he's saying yes. Anyway, the point is that uh, he's taking that jab, and again, the judges take notice of it. They, you know, It's a, a very apparent scoring blow. And then, of course, it also starts hurting the, the, the spinal column. So if he starts hurting your back, it immobilizes your legs. Getting hit like this immobilizes the back, it makes it very stiff, then it makes it hard to move your upper body and the legs, it makes it hard to throw shots as well, it takes the sting out of your shot. So it's just an all around, there's no reason to be taking these type of shots. And against um, Kimura too, he took a lot of jabs. And then on top of it, against Kimura, he's got this um, 
sideshow bob type haircut that, that, that the kids like to uh, wear nowadays so it looks even more apparent that he's getting his head snapped back because the whole sh muff of sh hair there is, sh is shaking up then he takes a left hook there so just very apparent look at him getting his head snapped back this is a big no-no man yoke has got a good jab quick hands he doesn't telegraph it so this type of sh uh, stuff just ain't gonna cut it against a guy like yoke so you see him taking a lot of shots against kimura um, the other thing, like I said before, when he jabs, he drops the hand and he gets hit with um, overhand rights there. And Yoka is a very sharp operator. He's not going to let uh, Tanaka get away with this. And even like when he's exchanging here, like we said, he's got good combinations and good hand speed, but doesn't t tend to replace his hands in the position to defend. And he takes shots like this. So far, he's been ma he's managed to take him, but... You can only get away with the, this type of shot so much, or taking this type of shot so much. Like, look at that guy like um, Jared Hurd. We saw him taking shot after shot, getting his head snapped back, and you people go, well, he's young and big, he can take it. Yeah, but at some point, it starts to affect him. And in his last fight against Santana, it seemed like the, the punishment uh, caught up with him. So hopefully it doesn't happen with Tanaka, but uh, he's going to have to really sharpen up his defense and not allow to get... And like here, now what I'm showing here is he's open for right hands and hooks as well coming see see the problem is here he likes to stand in place way too much sometimes with his hands down right right here's because he's covering up the body so i understand but look at his hands not even covering his chin not covering the temple just and he catches right hands here again here very wide open here a spot for overhand rights as he's exchanging here gets caught with the right i mean that happens it's an it's an exchange but again let's see there's a big opening here and he gets stunned there against Taguchi here again taking overhand look at his hands I know he's covering up to the body but then that just means that if you flurry to the body he's gonna pull pull his hands down like this and you, he's got an open shot there uh, on the right and then there's the uppercuts he likes to stand in place there and exchange with guys or wait for them to finish punching so that he can throw his shots as we saw before he likes to counter with um, left hooks on the inside but look at this notice his guard just ain't that tight it gets opened especially when the guys start mixing the shots the hooks to, to set up the uppercuts and just way too open for uppercuts he doesn't seem to mind that but like i said why take so many it, it starts uh, screwing your back up and therefore your movement and your power and uh it's just there's no need to be taking these type of shots and um Yoka has a good upper gun. He knows how to set him up. He's open for combinations too. Not just upper cut. Well, there you see uppercuts on the inside. And from the uppercuts, uh, they can flow. His opponents can flow with other combinations and set him up for left hooks upstairs. Look at this. See, he's he's not tightening up the guard, the gloves. He, they're, it's like he's trying to, to, to protect himself from hooks. But even with the hooks we saw, he takes him flush on the, on the face or on top of the head. So... This type of shot, big no-no, man. There's just no... I think it's because he's a very offensive-minded guy. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think in the comment section, but it just seems to me like he's a very offensive-minded fighter, and so he doesn't mind taking those type of shots as long as he sees and he's willing to take those shots so he can give some back. But here on the inside, open for the left hooks. See, they're going... See, this is very smart from Kimura. So a little short left uppercut, uppercut, uppercut to the body, and then he opens him up. Boom. I mean, there, at least he did try to bring that left glove up, but um, it still cut him on the side of the head. Here he goes with a right hook to the body. And then again, he's just he keeps coming forward and standing in his opponent's range with his hands down. Look at this. That's a full second there of coming forward with the hand down. Very sloppy work. And then he tries to bring the hand up, but he tries to... Like, what, what's he trying to block here? His ear? I mean, I don't know, maybe he's like one of those Japanese audiophiles that really loves listening to music and just he, he'd rather protect his ear than his gosh darn face and jaw. But a flush left hook there, another flush left hook. So again, there's just no reason to be taking those type of shots. One thing that um, Yoka likes to do, and he showed it against uh, not Don Inietes, is uh, straight right to the body. And Kimura was landing that right hand here to the body. It's an, again, just like... Um, Tanaka did to him with that uh, short, straight left that we saw earlier when he was shifting. Tanaka, I mean, Kimura was giving him some of it back with the straight right. Now, very good straight right. 
that um, Tanaka did not see coming because he was expecting shots upstairs. Just a nice straight ooh, shoving him back. Good technique from Kimura here, sitting down on the punch. See bending his legs as he does it, as if he's throwing a baseball butt to the body. Boom, he pushes him back and you can see how Tanaka shoved that left um, elbow back, trying to protect it because it, it did hurt him. Sometimes the straight shots can hurt guys because they don't see it coming and it helps you to set up offense upstairs. That's a textbook combination here. Go up downstairs with the right and then come in with the left because the opponent is expecting a right here so he's covering up for more uh, straight shots but instead you come over the angle with the, up, uh, the left hook and it's a pretty good combination so fellas you let us know what you think man how does Tanaka match up with Yoka is his defense good enough well he's gonna have to move a lot and really dance around Yoka not gonna allow him to stay in place because Yoka is very good at setting up his shots as we're gonna see um, I definitely should not stand in front of Yoka and let him have free shots but I mean Tanaka is a very good operator man and against lesser opposition he really chops them down to the body so tell us what you guys think tell us what we missed tell us what we got wrong tell us what we got right um, add your suggestions there uh, tell us who you think is gonna win and uh, that's about it fellas don't forget to like subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one all right fellas take it easy thanks for watching